Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Expedition Portal and Overland Journal. And I am out here in the Prescott National Forest with a new trailer from Australia. This is the Sniper X. Now there are some things that look familiar about this trailer from other ones that are brought in from Australia, but there are also some very unique features to this particular model. So this trailer is only 16 feet long, including the tongue, and the body itself is only nine feet long. When you're in tight trails, the six foot, six inch overall height makes it a lot easier to get through low branches and et cetera. But the thing that's really notable about it is the fact that it's only 1,800 pounds dry. Then it has a gross vehicle weight rating of 4,000 pounds. So you've got over 2,400 pounds of total available payload. Now, a lot of that's gonna be consumed by the 40 gallons of water on board and the fact that you can add multiple propane tanks and additional systems to the trailer. But this allows for this particular model to be well within the towing capacity of like, for example, a Jeep Wrangler. So easy to tow behind a 4Runner. Today, we're towing it behind a 1500 GMC AT4. So you can hardly even tell that it's back there. One of the other things that I really like about this trailer is the simple overall execution. There are very few things that are hanging off the sides. Everything is nice and flush, including the awnings. And that means that you're not gonna be catching those items on trees when you're moving through tight terrain. And if you can see, this also has significant ground clearance. The trailer is built on a coil sprung suspension. It has become very popular to fit these trailers with airbags, which certainly has their benefits. Airbags can reduce the amount of vibration to the contents of the trailer. So for example, keeping your eggs in one piece. And then you can also level the trailer or adjust the height of a trailer with airbags. But I actually like the fact that this particular model is on coils. So it gives a lot of overall ground clearance. Now the one thing that's a little bit unique about this suspension is that it does have a beam style axle. So it doesn't have quite as much ground clearance as you would find with the fully independent models. One of the other things that I really like about this trailer and I find for myself personally is one of the most important things when I consider even towing a trailer at all. And that is, can you actually sleep inside it comfortably in inclement weather? And this, this trailer has that in spades. The top pops up and it allows you to sleep fully inside the trailer. You can also bring up the bed and access a fold-out table. There's full standing height in this trailer so you can change, take a quick sponge bath, or even do some cooking when the weather gets really bad. This lower foot helps to stabilize the unit and it has a pretty good range of motion, but in this particular campsite, the ground is falling away fairly quickly, so you need to use a rock to provide some additional height for it. And that's helped stabilize the entire unit. And it makes it really easy to get in and out of the trailer. The other thing that I noticed is that because the steps are black, that they actually do get very hot in direct sun. And it would also be nice if the step, or at least the first step, had some grating on it. So that way when you stepped up onto the steps, you weren't carrying dirt up into the trailer itself. These are minor things, but you'd wanna have some kind of an entry mat to keep the dirt down. And then you have a full closing lockable door with access into the inside of the trailer. Once you've got the step down and the rear stabilizer in place, it is a good idea to go ahead and drop the tongue wheel, which gives some additional stability. After that's done, setting up the top is very simple. I like to get a little higher so I can get some leverage, but then you push up and in one motion, this thing will set itself up completely. So to set up the awning, it's a little bit more challenging with one person, but you get used to it. And once you get it tight, then you can lock the arm in place and then move on to the other side. The systems within this trailer are actually quite robust, but they're also very simple to access. They're all right there at the door. So this road power allows you to turn on and off the fridge, interior lights, side lights, and etc. Makes it very easy to access those on and off points, including the water pump for showering 
and for using the sink. There's a 12 volt outlet right here. And then a lot of information comes from the Red Arc system. So the Red Arc allows you to see the current state of the battery charge, the incoming solar current, and the current state of discharge as well. So I find this to be a really effective way to determine the current state of the overall electrical system. This Red Arc Red Vision is supported by a Manager 40, which is a 40 amp charge controller that allows you to plug the trailer into shore power. You can charge from the vehicle and it also regulates the incoming solar current as well. And then down here on the bottom, you can see the current level of the two water tanks, which really gives you an idea of what you've got left. That is one of the great attributes of this trailer is 40 gallons of water on board. So you can easily spend a week out in the wild if you're a little bit conservative. The trailer also has a traditional upright fridge that has more than enough space for a week's worth of food. And it also has a freezer that allows you to store meat for longer periods of time and even make ice. So this configuration is genuinely unique. You have a king size bed, almost six feet wide, and then you can flip it up and out of the way, leaving all of the bedding in place and deploy a full dinette. So this could easily sit two adults and maybe even a couple of small children. And you can also flip it up and out of the way so you have a bunch of standing room as well. But when you think about how many of us are working on the road or would like to spend some time updating our images at the end of the day, to have a place outside of the elements late at night even where you can work at a table like this or have a meal really makes all the difference and is a really surprising feature in a trailer this small. And believe it or not, there's actually even more storage. There's storage under where I'm sitting right now. And then there is another complete storage locker that fits next to the wheel well. It's not a full locker. It's taken up probably a third of it by the wheel well but there is plenty of storage for those deeper items where you don't need to access them every day. And what is super common with an Australian trailer is an outdoor kitchen. There's a couple retainer locks there and the whole kitchen unit slides out. So you have access to a sink that can get cold and hot water as well. Preparation surface made out of stainless steel for easy cleaning. And then when it's time to do cooking, the Thetford stove just slides out and you have full access. It's really easy to hook up those propane cylinders to these units and be cooking out in the field. At the front of the trailer, we have a couple key elements as well. We have 11 pound propane cylinders. We also have a stone shield that protects the front of the trailer from rock impacts. We have a full size spare tire that's mounted at an angle, which is also important because it allows the vehicle to go through a V-ditch without contacting the tire, which is actually a problem I've had with trailers in the past. At the front of the trailer, at the front of the drawbar, we have a McHitch. This is a very popular unit for Australia. It allows for full rotation of the trailer, and it also allows it to go through the full range that you would encounter on ledges and ditches and a really abrupt overhangs. It's a pretty easy trailer to actually dock uh, because it just slides into this mount here. It uses a universal joint. And then it also integrates a mechanical brake as well, which is always a good idea if you're leaving the trailer unattended or not hooked up to the vehicle. There's also at the front of the trailer, a solar panel on the roof and that allows you to keep the trailer outside and stored without even having to plug it in. There's more than enough power. I believe it's a 100 watt solar panel that will easily run the fridge for an entire trip. This back side of the trailer here is where all of the water components are maintained and also where you have a shower. This is where all the plumbing is. So you can open up the two different water tanks or close them off. I always like it when a unit has more than one water tank, just in case you end up with a leak, you don't lose all of your water in one shot. Then you also have access to the full shower head here. If you're in a campground or if you're camping out with other people and you want some privacy, this is a totally flush mounted shower enclosure. 
and it's got self-supporting arms that just swing up and out of the way. And the whole thing sets up in literally just a few, a few seconds and you have a full enclosure. In this back corner, we just have an open storage locker. We also have a 12 volt outlet as well. So this is a very deep storage, goes halfway up underneath the bed. We've got some camera equipment in here, but this is where you can store your water fill and a bunch of other equipment. I also like the fact that these are all carpeted, which really does protect the contents of the trailer. So the cons on this trailer are actually very few. This unit is clearly well thought out and it has been designed and manufactured by people who spend a lot of time in the backcountry. The one thing that I did notice with two people is that the interior space can get a little bit cramped. It can be difficult to move around in the interior space. But again, to have that much interior space in such a small trailer is very unique. It also does not have an adjustable suspension and it's difficult to level the trailer from left to right. Front to back, it does fine, but you have to spend a lot of time leveling the trailer since you're sleeping inside of it. But again, these are being nitpicky. Overall, this trailer is excellent. But it is worth noting too that this trailer does cost 40,000 US dollars. So that is a real investment for people. It can cost as much as a tow vehicle. To find out more information about this trailer, go to offroadrv.com and you can look up their Sniper X.